Hello, everybody. This is Elijah Ignat here of the Apocalypse Committee, and we are here to inform you of the changes happening on the planet. And each of us has a unique perspective that we would like to share with you. And together, this triad is, is, is again informing you about the apocalypse. So I'll start first by going over to Mr. Jordan Stillman and uh, see what he has to say. Hello, everybody. Yes, that's true. So this week, um, I've themed um, a reminder of ease. And I did this, I, I, I themed that like two weeks ago. And so when I thought I was going to get to this week, reminder, oh, ease, right. So this week's going to be like really easy, you know, it's going to, I'm going to feel a lot of ease. And then I got to this week and I was just hit with this like overwhelming emotional weight and feeling like these expectations and I'm not doing good enough and all this like intense weight and like emotions and like, um, you know, challenging uh, mentalities. And then I'm looking at that intention. I'm like a reminder of ease. Oh, that's because this is a really important time to give yourself a reminder of ease, to always be coming back to your breath, to your grounding, to a state of, of uh, you know, neutrality and acceptance in yourself and in, in the face of, you know, um, emotional turmoil or, or, or challenging ideas that you're experiencing. So I find this week, uh, in, in my experience as the start of it, has been uh, a lot about just constantly reminding yourself and going back to life can be easeful. It can be, you can be gentle. You can, you can relax into your experience. Hello, beautiful community. Nice to see you again. Um, so what has been going on for me this week? Uh, Jordan was just talking about ease. I feel like that has also been a very important word, a very important practice, um, to surround ourselves with because as there are these extreme poles of energies and extreme fluctuations of emotions because of COVID. Uh, I've been practicing meditation and yoga every single day and really meditating on peace for me, which can go hand in hand with ease. And I'm finding so much more grace for my compassion towards people and what they're going through. And a huge revelation, too, was um, my ability to really see people truthfully behind their masks. I don't have to take it personally when I see something that somebody needs to work on. <laughs> and they look at me with these, like, eyes of fear. Um, and then just realizing that that is, like, important part of their process and creating creating a boundary around myself as in like their reflection of of fear as being a part of their process towards grace and ease I don't need to take it personally like I did anything wrong or they don't like me um, that happened with my roommate after a jam and we had this really beautiful conversation about energetics and spirit and I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing the sandwich thing where I'm like, oh my God, so many things. Um, <laughs> so what, what is my point? My point is that with these fluctuations, with the spacesuit we have on, it's really important to take time out of the day to do the practical technologies such as meditation and yoga going into nature so that you can actually have more of a discernment with other energies and also be more graceful in your initial reactions to let's say fear for instance um so yeah it's been i've been a lot more joyful i have a, a there's a lot of trauma in my life there's a lot of disturbance and i feel like i'm actually starting to um 
be pulling on the reins of of uh, those reactions with this beautiful technology. Uh, so yeah, thank you, thank you for listening. I I just today um, am starting uh, a conversations to transform the world sort of process. It's a group in Facebook, and uh, Jordan is in it, but you aren't Samantha. Um, there was, I put a call out just on my Facebook page and I don't really, I'm not inviting, I just sort of put it up there and, and see who's paying attention. That's my big thing is who's paying attention to Captain Sweep? <laughs> and usually it's, it's not a lot, but to, we got 12 people within a couple of days, which wasn't bad. I'd like to post something and like within minutes have it filled. But of course I've sort of eliminated my entire Facebook uh, network. So I'm down to a hundred people. So, <laughs> and most of them are probably looking at me. <laughs> you know what's he about to do now so within this group there's i'm going to use the maps using the live stream map so starting in the lifetime cycle and having a conversation that is a specific conversation type so this is a spell with a welcoming conversation freedom as the um value and worldview as the focus point and so then there's three questions and the question is, you know, what is freedom to you and how do you think it's being affected right now? The second question is, what is your worldview? How do you identify with the, what that worldview is? And then the third question is, um, what do you see happening on the planet right now? And what remedies do you have? And you only have like one post for the first one, one post for the second, and then three posts for the group one. So it's a very specific conversation and I'm, I'm facilitating it and then using the tools of the new paradigm toolkits. This is like the first time in 25 years really of having the conversation types. I mean, I've had them for 15 years and like talk about slow, right? <laughs> talk about, but it's, but it, it seems like the timing is now like the whole world is changing right now. And I feel like I, I'm, I've reached a place where I'm ready to sort of go into the, the more general world. And uh, just the look of this, of looking a little bit more professional and looking, you know, saying that I can be normal. I can come across, you know, kind of like a, a, a human who doesn't have to be a character or wear clothing or, or come across as being strange. The work that I've done is, is good for the everybody. It's uh, not just a fringe element kind of thing. And so I see that as, you know, again, like the, the start or beginning. And this is part of it. You know, I'm, I'm teaming up. I'm grouping up with different people. I'm making media shows with different people. And each one of them is very different. And this is, this is a configuration of three. And the three of us create something very different. And then I have configurations of two. And then I have configurations of eight. And I have configurations of four. I'm about to start the fourth Planetary Guardians media team. And so each media team is very different because you've got four different personalities. And I love this Zoom framing. I love this little environment. I, I love that it's contained. I love that it's focused on the conversation and that each person, is, you know, is, is very present within here towards the parameters of whatever we're doing. And so I, I look forward each week to talking with you because I enjoy communicating with you. And whether people watch this or not, at some point, perhaps when they see us doing certain things, but for us, it's, it's like, getting used to creating our own media and being our own media, maybe just for our small little network. Like I think it takes time to even get to the point where you're willing to share your own media with just the people that know you, let alone the outer public. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I got to say right now. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of that process has been um, creating consistency. You know, it's like I've been having, um, I've been, all my, all my work right now is put into how can I create with ex consistency? How can I show up in a routine that honors my life and my values and my priorities? How do I create a, a schedule that allows me to create effortlessly and always in a state of bliss and passion you know and and the effort 
that's put in is is um so so synchronously connected to my drive that i'm excited to wake up in the morning i'm excited to move to this step to this step to this step um and be be just um constantly excited by by life and what i'm doing and i've been noticing like the shifting my men my mentality the, my just states of how i'm looking at things um you know i'm really on a on a quest of self-discovery and what it means to me me and in that what it means to fall in love with myself and and how it feels to fall in love with myself and and following that feeling and and the work the job you know it's not a job it's not a job that you go do so that you can support yourself to enjoy life in the in in the times that you're not working it's like every point of your life should be an act of falling in love with yourself and deepening that connection deepening that intimacy and i i'm just if there's you shouldn't have to do anything outside of your love for yourself so that you can show up to love yourself. Everything that you do in your life should be about your connection of love with, with you and who you are, connected to your passions and your identity and be strengthening that bond with yourself. And with yourself anchored through the people that you love in your life and the community and, and all the people in your, in your groups. Um, that you're strengthening the love, your passion and sharing that passion and strengthening those chords. So for me, it's really been a lot about how can I, how can I experience a flow and a rhythm and emotion of life that allows me to be, be ushered from one point of passion to another, to another, to another. And the whole all together this entire water slide this entire adventure is is a track is a train track and it's the the track of my life it's the track of my love Emotions are very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, during <clears throat> during we had another we had another remote art event through the Creatrix Collective on Sunday. And I was guiding everybody, our element was water. And I was guiding everybody through a chakra clearing visualization focused on water. And there was this one woman at the end who was a mother. And um, she said when she heard the, the um, meditation about the water trickling down her neck, she felt this release of tears and that she realized that she was an artist as well and that she hadn't been taking time for herself being a mother having that hat on um in that moment of release and flow she was like i want more creativity and love for myself um which was really beautiful. And um, I feel like in the links between our conversations, I remember posting yesterday one of your talks that was from like 2016 or something. And what really resonated, Elijah's talk, what really resonated with me is you were talking about the inner space something about your technology and your inner space really reflecting outwards in the world of how we see things and how we are all little droplets in this ocean 
of collective experience and how we view ourselves, the practices that we do, falling in love with ourselves and taking the time and what is necessary uh, to cultivate that will reflect outwards and our out outward environment will change. I think it's really, really important right now. And that ease is super important in relation to, we, were, we are coming from a very heavy and addictive environment where we're all going so fast and being like, look at me, look at me. I'm the best mother. I'm the best girlfriend. I am, I am just the best. Look at all the workshops I've done. Look at all the things that I have achieved. And I think that we're missing the point of like coming back to like, what do I just need right now for myself to feel comfortable? And I was working with a friend, Aaliyah, who's an intuitive and around Jordan, that, that word of passion. She said, for me, passion can also be addiction. The through line is peace, balancing out this insatiable need of approval and this insatiable need to produce can cause a lot of pain. Mm. So this peace, just finding the peace in every moment of coming back to the breath, checking in with ourselves, being like, what is the next step for myself so that I can be the best human for everybody else, so I can really show up? <clears throat> I think I think it isn't one of the definitions of the apocalypse is, is it's in an unveiling and we're in the great unveiling because of we're all seeing each other and we're, and we're getting so much feedback from YouTube and, and Facebook that, and all the other social medias we're getting a, a, a feedback that the species has never gotten because getting so much corporate mainstream news and feedback is like some guy at six o'clock giving some two minute assessment of something on the other side of the planet and sort of not really having any real depth or any real consistency or any real I think wisdom in regards to what media is supposed to do for people and now we're getting it everywhere but we've got so much of it you know, it's coming in from so many directions and we're doing it and you know how much attention does a human being have you know how many, how many videos or streams or things can we do and here we are you know creating more but um i've had you know over the last week again i've had like many experiences as the amount of events in my life of significance are increasing as i sort of leave the reclusion of research for 25 years into bringing the, this work into the world and the third team, I did session two yesterday, and they did the five communication spaces map. And that's what I start with everyone. The five communication spaces, the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, the group space, community space, and sacred space, and then they create a value system. And that's the first session. And two people, I asked them on the second session, like what happened during the week, anything that came about, and both two of the three had had very significant sort of transformations or changes in their life as a result of that map. And that's like, for me, like huge win, a huge victory to show that just with these maps, it changes the mind, it gives you new perspectives and it, it programs the space for you to now experience things differently. And that to me is like, a, you know, all the research I've been doing, everything I've come across is like, this is the best thing. This is like, this is, and you know, it, there was so much joy in, in being able to share that with people and then having them and giving them permission saying, go share that with anybody. Like this is, go do it. And one person's already got a team lined up and he's already like, one of the ideas is to make a hundred an hour, you know, planetary guardians, the minimum wage is a hundred dollars an hour. So whatever I'm teaching these people, they can go do with anybody. And Matthew's already going to go do that. So 
the next step is already happening. I see a big viral wave, right? And, you know, it's kind of like as this world is disintegrating and as they're trying to put in these control measures and these scams and all this stuff is happening, you know, and as you squeeze, there's all these other people that are sort of rising. You know, they're, they're, there's these conscious, aware, brilliant beings, the artists, all the people who do not want their freedom interfered with at all. And I, I, and I think, you know, they think they can get away with it. And I was interviewing Carl Kalaman, and I'm starting to interview some, some people that, let's say, hold certain knowledge that I think is very important. And Carl Kalaman is uh, one of the leading researchers on the Mayan calendar. And he understands the waves, that there's nine waves of creation. And that the last, there's a civilization wave, and then an industrial wave, and then what we're going, then a digital wave. That technology. And then there's this unity wave, this thing won't move. There's a unity wave, wave right in front, I can't move. Okay, that the highest waves, are kind of like coming in very quickly, but these longer waves are still there. So we're about to go into this wave that has a downfall going to September of 2021. So whatever we're experiencing right now, it's gonna get worse and worse and worse until September of 2021, and then it's gonna to start to get better. But at the top, there's this unity wave. <clears throat> I think people like ourselves are tapping into, and he calls, there's quantum levels, like the people that are trapped in the civilization and industrial waves, where there's a duality, where there's oppression, where there's all the negative things we see on the planet, they exist in this wave, but they haven't made the jump to the higher digital or the higher unity waves. And it explains consciousness and the evolution of consciousness as something our minds tap into as being part of these galactic waves are hitting us and that we are either open or accessing it. Some people are just always open to, let's say, unity consciousness, the younger people, and then the older people, they're trapped in this interpretation of reality. And, and it, it just, the way he explains it, he has this book, The, the Nine Ways of Creation. It's, it's, it, it just makes sense. It, it, it's, I think it's the underlying foundation for what we're going through. Yeah. And again, he, he, he doesn't get much buy-in from scientists or anybody else. But for any of the side of kind of new waivers, they, they're they like, of course, this explains what I'm experiencing. So this week's been pretty amazing in terms of the, um, the jumps ahead that I'm experiencing, at least with my own work. <laughs> Good job, Elijah. So a lot of connectivity then to the groups, to the community. The the beginning of, you know, it's it's like the inflow matrix was kind of stuck, and so now the outflow matrix is happening. So I'm sort of breathing and feeling a lot better. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a question. Would you say then, from my experience of what you're talking about, about these like smaller waves up here and then the collective being down here, I think that it is, um, people need to go through the dark night of the soul and really see where they have been and unconsciously been acting acting responding from so that they can like finally surrender and detach to go up there that's what i feel like what i what i feel has happened to me personally is like stop clinging to those addictive patterns of your past of thought process and just surrender and be more curious about those other voices and those serendipitous events and these angels, or maybe I don't have to say it in that way, but like, you know, your fairies or angels or just the other people that are here on your path 
that are helping you guide the way. Um, so that really resonated with me. I really feel that too. And like, it's a day to day as um, K Pacha astrologer I listened to since 2018. He said that like, things aren't going to get easier. You're just going to be able to better cope and keep on coming back to gratitude. Keep on coming back to uh, peace, peace, peace as a through line. It's a through line because we are we aren't just these physical cool beings we are connected to like the galactic orders and the energies that are going on and we're also connected to who's in our household telepathically in or in our hearts in our energy field i am i am feeling and i'm starting to think like those people mm. so it's like that discernment and that choice is so pivotal towards being up here mm. i feel Mm -hmm. um, so in my work, I've been exploring uh, living in kind of like a three phase system. So you're always rotating between three points. And for me, uh, like I have said before, those points are, are anchored at awakening. So awakening, friendship and sovereignty. And so I'm experiencing myself resonating at those points and I'm, I'm building my life and my foundation around those points. Um, but I've created world, like three different worlds that I can toggle, shift between. And that's what we were talking about, about um, Hyperflex and Fairy Tale Warriors and Pandora's Box. Uh, and there are three, three different like wave signs um, and with hyperflux, it's basically like three different like brain waves that you can shift between. And hyperflux, you you kind of have a bird's eye view of the situation. You see how people are connected, how groups are connected, how you're connected to your goals and your dreams. You can see everything like almost like what that in like Iron Man when he has, throws up those like holographic maps. Like you can see everything in a holographic connectivity um, map. And then fairy tale warriors comes into like your life. You're here on earth living your life. What does that mean to you? What, what does it feel like? What are the emotions that you go through? What is your experience? What are you doing? Like, how are you playing and, and showing up for yourself in the world? And that's very much fairy tale warriors. So that's like the alpha wave. It's like you're right there in your life, living your life. Um, and then with Delta, with Pandora's box, it's like this parallel world again, a, th a third parallel world, but it really shows the shadow and the challenge of what people are going through in a really honest way. And it's, you know, it can be creepy, it can be grotesque, it can be disturbing and brutal at times, but it's a way that you don't just fall into the darkness of life. You can, you, you keep your demons nearby so that they don't rule your life but you live in fairy tale warriors and you can always check in with the shadow world and you can always check in with the connectivity and you come back and live in in the your alpha you can rise up see how oh this is where i'm going you can plot it all out in beta you come back to alpha to live the experience and then you go into the delta to okay, here's where we need to clean up our, our, our karma or our behavior or our patterns because we're getting caught up here. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed it's really helped um, when I'm working with other people to not get so, you know, when I see things that are out of alignment, to not let that control my perception of the, of the connection. Mm -hmm. To not have that that be so glaring me in the face that I can't focus on anything because I just delegate that to to Delta to Pandora's box and I don't have to just exist in Pandora's box I exist in a you know and and I can program the state of Alpha I want it to be you know happy and proud and fierce and show up for for my life and love and passion and and be able to when I want to go in like when I want to work with when it's appropriate to to talk about shadow 
and um, hardships or shortcomings to be able to toggle into that, but have your primary functioning reality to be not, you know, soaked in, in the incongruencies and the hardship of your, of your reality and your, um, you know, energy experience. I think we're just going to end this. We've got less than a minute left for the, the Zoom kind of limit. And so I will stop here and then we'll continue with part two. Okay.